We pack up the gear and head to Southern Illinois for this episode of The Paw Report. Tucked away near the Crab Orchard National Wildlife Refuge, you'll find the Little Grassy Fish Hatchery. While many fish are raised here, the main event at Little Grassy is the catfish production. We'll take you on a tour of the facility and talk with hatchery manager John Ziegler about its history and production. So stay with us. The Paul Report starts right now. Fetcher's Pet Supply on the north side of the Charleston Square is serving the EIU community since 1991. Fetcher's welcomes all pets on a leash, is open seven days a week, and offers made in the USA food. Pet supplies for dogs, cats, reptiles, and fish. Fetcher's Pet Supply in Charleston. The Paw Report on WEIU is supported by Rural King, America's farm and home store, livestock feed, farm equipment, pet supplies, and more. You can find your store and more information regarding Rural King at RuralKing.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Well, the Paul Report is back in Southern Illinois. Again, we're out of the studio at the Little Grassy Fish Hatchery near Carbondale, near Macanda, Illinois. And we're joined by the hatchery fish manager, John Ziegler. Thank you so much for those viewers that didn't join us last week. Uh, John is here to once again kind of tell us about the hatchery. And then we're going to pick up our discussion uh, about some community things that the hatchery uh, does here in Southern Illinois. So John, thanks again for staying with us for another episode. We appreciate you joining us. Yeah, thank you for, for coming and, and we appreciate you coming. Thank you. We want to uh, kind of tell the viewers again about the hatchery, maybe those that didn't uh, pick up the segment last week. So give us kind of an overview about the hatchery and its history. Uh, we're one of three fish hatcheries for the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. We were established in 1959, went through a few renovations, 1962, 1979, and through 83 or 81. Um, we have 21 ponds, 18 raceways, which are tanks that water flows in one end out the other for rearing fish, um, 20 indoor raceways, uh, incubation facilities for hatching eggs in, inside, and we produce warm water species and uh, produce all of the channel catfish and blue catfish for the state of Illinois. And those warm water species besides the two cats that you raise here are what? Uh, bluegill, red ear sunfish, black crappie, and largemouth bass. You mentioned the catfish production. That's kind of the main event here at the Little Grassy. Uh, talk about the production, the fish pairing, the placement, uh, the spawning cubicles, how the eggs are collected, that sort of thing. Yeah, so we'll bring our, our adult channel catfish up from our, our holding ponds that we hold them in the rest of the year. We'll bring them up to our outdoor raceways and we'll pair up a male and female in each of 96 pens and we'll put in a, a milk can, a 10 gallon milk can in for a spawning cavity. And they'll go in and they'll spawn in that cavity and then we'll come back twice a week and check those milk cans for spawns. And then when we find a spawn, it'll be one big mass of eggs. And so they all stick together in this big gelatinous mass. And the, those will range from one to five pounds and they'll have up to 40,000 eggs in them. And so we'll go through, when we find them, we'll, we'll remove that from the can and we'll place it in a bucket with water and then when we're done checking all the spawns, we'll bring them inside, and then we start a separation process. So we'll, we'll weigh the eggs first, um, put them in a holding trough, and then we start to separate them using sodium sulfite. So we'll put them in a bowl with sodium sulfite solution. That breaks down the gel gelatinous material that holds all those eggs together. And so then once they're all freed up from each other, then we can incubate them in jars. And so then we'll put them in incubation jars that have water flowing in, and it, it flows up through all those individual eggs and so they all get fresh oxygenated water and then it flows out the, the top of the jar. Uh, you have raised blue cats before, but now you're actually rearing them. Um, is that true? Yeah, so um, we always got 
uh, yolk sack fry from uh, another state that always had excess fry. Um, they stopped producing blue catfish on their own, so we had to find another source for blue catfish fry. Uh, so we would get the fry from them, and we would grow them out on our own here to that four to seven inch size that we'd stock them at at the end of the summer. Um, but once we lost that source, then we, we decided to try to spawn those fish ourselves. So we required some adult blue catfish, and they range from like 15 to 60 pounds. It's quite a bit bigger than our channel catfish that we use. Um, and in 2018, we got our first spawn from those fish. Uh, it had 37,000 eggs that hatched. Um, we stocked those out that year. Um, and this year, 2021, we've collected two blue catfish spawns. Um, and combined those total just over 200,000 eggs that we hatched um, and we're growing those out in our ponds currently. We'll stock those at the end of the summer, um, probably late September, we'll stock those out at power plant cooling lakes across the state. Now when you say 200,000 eggs, how many of those actually become full-fledged and you know that you're transporting them to other locations? I typically have pretty good survival. Um, It'd probably be about 90 to 95 percent survival of those that, that we'll end up stocking out. For those viewers that missed, um, let's talk about the services here. Uh, this isn't necessarily a place that the public can come and just bring their buckets and get their own fish. Uh, this is a facility that actually stocks the waterways within the state, ponds, lakes, rivers. Yeah, so we stock uh, lakes, um, uh, ponds, and, and streams that are managed are owned by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Um, so to, um, we stock those, uh, we don't stock private ponds at mm -hmm. all, just, just public managed water bodies. I would have to believe that that's a pretty intense process to gather up all of the stock and then start your process around the state. How are the different waterways chosen and, and take us through the process of gathering and, and de delivering those different species to the waterways. Yeah, so we, we have district fisheries biologists throughout the state and they, they all have a, a, a set amount of counties that they oversee and they'll, they'll monitor the water bodies that they manage in those counties and they'll, they'll, they'll um, do samples of the population in those water bodies to see how the fish population is doing. And if they believe that they need more fish of a certain species, they'll request those fish and they go on to a stocking list. And that's how we determine what needs to be stocked in each, each water body. Um, and then, so when, we, when we're ready to stock the fish, when we get them up to a size that they're ready to be stocked, we'll harvest, if they're in a pond, we'll harvest a pond and bring them up to, to our indoor tanks and hold them until we're ready to, to stock them. And, or if they're our channel catfish we raise in our raceways, we'll, we'll start there so we'll crowd the fish to one end of the tank that they're in and then we'll do a sample count so we'll we'll net out a, cer a certain amount of pounds of fish and count out the number of fish in that sample and based off that we get a, a number per pound of fish and based off that sample count we can know how many pounds we need to load on the trick uh, on the truck to get the number of fish we need for each site so then we'll once we have that number we'll we'll start loading the trucks, we'll net the fish, transfer them to baskets, weigh the baskets, and, and hand the baskets up to somebody on the truck, and they'll transfer them to the, the hauling tanks. So each of our trucks has hauling tanks that range from 200 to 400 pounds, and some of those trucks have multiple tanks that total up to 2,000 pounds for our biggest truck. And each one of those trucks is equipped with oxygen bottles, so we can add oxygen to the water in those tanks based on the needs of the fish, the amount of fish that we have in the tank. And so then during that fish hauling trip, the technician will monitor the, the oxygen levels on the truck to make sure that they're a suitable level to keep the fish healthy. And then when they get to a lake, they'll either count out, they'll either net out the number of fish that they need and transfer them to the water, or they'll, they'll dump the whole tank uh, through an eight inch tube into the water body. Are most of the fish that you stock um, smaller, you know, the four to seven inch size, depending on the species. You want them to be at a mature age, but then get larger based on their new environment? Yeah, so the size depends, you know, on the species and the type of water body they're going into. Um, it's mostly smaller size fish, so fingerling fish, so 
Some fish will stock at like a, a one to two inch size. Um, some fish will stock at like a four to seven inch size. Um, or our channel catfish, we try to stock those at an eight inch size because they're pretty vulnerable when they're small. Mm -hmm. And so we grow those a little bit bigger, but then we just try to get them into the population where we're stocking them. And then they'll, they'll grow out the rest of the way on their own from there. I can't imagine that that's a very quick process and, and the process being stocking the lakes throughout the state. How many waterways are you stocking and, and how long is the process? Is it a year long thing? Do you stock certain areas at certain times of the year? So we stock 200 to 300 lakes per year from, from our hatchery. Um, so some of that largemouth bass is, is mostly in the spring and early summer. The bluegill, red ear sunfish, and black crappie are all stocked in the fall. And we stock the, uh, the blue catfish in the fall. But the channel catfish, we stock between 200 and 400,000 of those a year. And they, it, it, we start stocking usually in mid-June through the end of August, sometimes middle of September. So it, it takes quite a while to stock them out. This time of year, we're sending out trucks Two to, two to four trucks daily, um, four days a week right now to stock out those catfish across the state. What you've just talked about is, is so interesting to those of us that don't work in this environment. Community outreach plays a big role too in the hatchery here to explain to the public like we're doing today exactly what you do here and how you're helping the environment. Talk about the facility's role in, in educational services and community outreach. Yeah, so we provide tours to the public, so you can schedule a tour and, and come and see the hatchery. Um, you, the, we have a visitor center where we'll, we'll give a short presentation and then we'll show you the, the facilities. You can see our incubation room and our start room and you can see our outdoor raceways and you can see our ponds from a distance. Um, so through uh, through April through late August, we typically have channel catfish in our raceways that you can see, we can, you can feed those in the raceways and see them. Um, and in June, you can, you can see uh, eggs and fry typically in our incubation room and in our, our indoor rearing facility. So early June, you would see the eggs and, and uh, most of the month of June, you'll be able to see channel catfish and blue catfish fry in there. Excellent. How many fish would you say are produced annually at the hatchery? So we produce anywhere from 800,000 to 1.6 million fish per year. And I'd say we want to see some of these fish. <laughs> we yeah. want to see some of this beautiful facility and you've been so gracious enough to take us on a tour and that's where the Paul Report is going to go at this point. We're going to unplug the mics at least right here and John is going to give us a tour of the little grassy fish hatchery. When the public comes in, we're at the main entrance to the fish hatchery. Lots to see in here too. Tell yeah. us about the room that we're starting off in. Yeah, so this is the, the main entrance to the visitor center of the hatchery. So when people first come here, they'll come in here and our site interpreter or another staff member will give a short uh, talk about what we do here at the hatchery, what we produce and how we produce it. And then we'll take them around to different parts of the facility to show them our incubation room where the eggs are hatched, our start room where the, the fry start to grow out after they've been hatched and, and then um, we'll take them out to our raceways and, and during times of the year when we have water in our raceways they'll get to feed some fish out there. That's an uh, orange-throated darter. Um, mm. They live in the streams like in a riffle area um, and they just eat little bugs and you see how it's sitting on the bottom? They don't swim up through the water like the other fish do, they just stay on the bottom and they'll dart around, where that's, you know, that's why they call them darters. John, we walked a few steps from the main entrance of the hatchery and we are now in what's called the incubation room. Yeah, so this is the room where we incubate our catfish eggs. So when they first come in, we'll separate them on, in the, at the sink back there. We'll have stainless steel bowls. We, we put the eggs in there, we add the sodium sulfite solution and we stir them gently until they, they all separate. And then we'll transfer them to a hatching jar. So. You can see on the rack behind us, we have a, a hatching jar, incubation jar, and there's a tube in the middle. This is where the water comes in. The water comes down this trough on top. We can open a valve, it'll come down this tube, 
and then it comes, it's curved on the bottom so the water comes up evenly throughout the jar and all the eggs get fresh oxygenated water. And it flows out the top and then down there. And the eggs stay in the bottom of the jar so they don't, they don't come out of the jar. And then once they've all hatched, we'll take the fish from that jar and we'll move them out to our start troughs, which are small indoor raceways. And we'll, we'll grow them out in there for the next two, two and a half weeks after they hatch. How long are they in this room? So this room, it's usually five to eight days. Yeah. And then from there, you said they go into the next room we're they, gonna head into yeah. uh, in the indoor race, race areas, race tank areas. Yeah. yeah, so then we go to our start room where our indoor raceways are, and they'll be in there for two to two and a half weeks. So they'll have a big yolk sack at first and a small body, and they're pretty immobile at that point. They just lay on the bottom of the tank at first, the first three or four days as they absorb that yolk sack. That's what they live off of for those first three to four days. And once they absorb all the nutrients out of that yolk sac, they start looking a little bit more like a little catfish, and then they'll start swimming around looking for food. And that's when we start to feed train them. We'll start adding the food into the tanks. Okay, John, we have left the incubation room, and now we've moved into another indoor raceway facility here at Little Grassy. What room are we in now, and what type of production happens? So this is our start room. So we have our indoor, our 20 indoor raceways in here, and 12 of those we have start troughs in them, fiberglass start troughs. And that's where our channel catfish and blue catfish will go after they hatch. So we'll bring them out in the jars and we'll transfer them to these tanks. And they'll have water flowing in the pipe here and it flows out. We'll have a stand pipe and a screen in the other end and it'll flow out there. So each one of these troughs will have between 100,000 to 200,000 small fry fish in them. And if, as I mentioned at first, they'll be mostly yolk sac with just a small body and they'll just be on the bottom of that tank and just hanging out there all in a big group. And then as they absorb that yolk sac, they'll swim up and they'll start looking for food. And we'll, we'll put feeders in here and they'll have powdered feed that'll drop in. They'll, they'll train on the feed in there and they'll live off that feed for the first two and a half weeks in here. We'll feed them in here and then we'll move, all, move them out to our ponds. And then how long, you said in here a couple of weeks and then they go out to the ponds? Is that about the time frame? Yes. And is it all species in here? Uh, it's mostly just so, so the for catfish. our production, it's the catfish, the channel catfish and the blue catfish. Now, the tanks that don't have troughs on that side, when we harvest our, our bluegill or our red ear sunfish or our black crappie or largemouth bass ponds, we'll bring them up and hold them in those tanks until they're ready to stock out. And then we'll load them up in a truck and stock them in the, in the public water bodies. And this goes back to when you were explaining in the, our first segment together, the intensive raising. Um, yes. That has a lot to do with you as opposed to the extensive training yes. for the other species. Yeah, I mean, the catfish, they're in here and we're dealing with them daily, cleaning tanks, feeding them. It's a lot of work, especially those first two to three weeks that they're in here. It's a lot of work keeping everything clean, keeping them fed and, and just maintaining those tanks. Whereas the, warm, the other warm water species we produce, the, the sunfish, the bass, the crappie, they're only in here for a day or two and they're gone they, once we take them from the ponds. So again, the catfish are in here for a few weeks and then they move out to the outdoor ponds yes. and that's where we're gonna head next here on our tour of the Little Grassy Fish Hatchery. from the indoor raceways to now we're outside to the uh, Channel Catfish Raceway. Tell us what's behind you here. All right, so these are our outdoor raceways. This is where we grow our Channel Catfish out. So it's, we, we, they're here in their second year of life. Uh, their first year of life, after they're done in the building, they go out to the ponds. They'll be in the ponds until the following March. So March of this year, we brought these fish up from a pond and we put them in this raceway and we've grown them out, we've fed them a little bit more intensively in this, these raceways, and we've grown them out to that eight inch size and now we're stocking them out throughout the state. And you said there's about 40 to 50,000 catfish in this particular raceway? Yeah, so it's about 50,000 catfish in this raceways. They all have between like 
40 and 50,000 in them right now. And what exactly are you feeding them? Maybe you could put a scoop in and <laughs> we saw it earlier and they're yeah, hungry. Yeah, so it's a, it's a commercial fish food, it's a pellet food. It's mostly fish meal and some, some uh, plant products too and uh, fish oil. So how much, uh, how many times a day, how much of the fish food that you just showed us do you, do you feed every day? So we feed one to two times per day, and right now we're feeding about 100 and 120 pounds for two of these race lays, another one's 40 pounds. And you said how many times a day? Uh, usually one time per day in the morning. Just visually, the catfish look four to seven inches-ish long. Is that yeah. probably yes. accurate? Yep. So from here, this is where you load them up and potentially take them to lakes, ponds, streams around the state. Yes. Yeah. All right, John, the next part of our tour, we're again, we're outside, but we've moved a little further, I guess, east or west to one of the outdoor ponds. Uh, tell us about one of the 18, 17 ponds here on the property? This is one of our uh, 21 ponds. 21 outside. ponds. So this is where we hold our adult blue catfish. Um, so we, they stay in this pond year round. We actually put containers in this pond for them to spawn and instead of bringing them up to our raceways due to their large size so we don't have to handle them and stress them out. Um, and so we'll put like 55 gallon drums in here with holes cut in them and, and big wooden boxes that we've made. And they'll go in there and they'll spawn. And we'll swim in there and we'll get the eggs out and bring them inside. And then from then it's like the channel catfish process. We just hatch the eggs and rear them inside for a couple weeks and then bring them out to ponds and grow them out the rest of the summer. And when do you collect the eggs? What time of year is that so usually? So for the, the blue catfish, it seems like it's, it's mid to late May, early June usually. Um, and you were successful this year? Yes. How many uh, eggs or how many different? Uh... So we got two different spawns and combined, it was just over 200,000 eggs total. And they're still, they're still growing, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. How deep is this pond? Uh, uh, the deepest spot, it's about eight feet over by the concrete structure. Um, and you see we have aeration there. It's electric aerator we use if needed. We have water flushing into the pond to keep it um, keep it cleared up and to, and to cool it off a little bit through the warm part of the summer. And again, you said there are 21 ponds here as we kind of look out over the property. Uh, again, just for our viewers, uh, so they understand it, each of these ponds contain different species. Yeah, so this is a blue catfish, the, the, the blue catfish brood fish, that's the fish we use for spawning. It's where we hold them. We hold channel catfish at the pond over there with the cart. That's our channel catfish adult adult ponds on either side of him. We have several ponds. We have, uh, I, th I think, six ponds right now with channel catfish fingerlings in them, the small fingerlings. Um, we have uh, four ponds with, with uh, blue catfish fingerlings in them right now. We have a bluegill pond, a red ear, pond, red ear sunfish pond, uh, three black crappie ponds, um, and we have a, a the next pond over from here is our largemouth bass adult pond, where we hold those until we spawn them. A lot of those sport anglers are going to be looking out for, for yeah. that, that middle pond. You um, indicated that you'd be willing to feed the blue catfish. Now, uh, word of advice to our viewers that are watching, they may not come up. You said they're kind of, they're kind of finicky about yeah, they, environmental situations. They like to feed early and late. You know, those low light conditions, our, our adults seem to like that best for feeding. And so they may not come up, so we'll, we'll give it a try and see what happens. Same, same uh, feed as the pellets that yes. you just used? Yeah. All right, let's it's do it. It's just a bigger version. And you'll notice when they come up to feed, there will be some bluegill in there that come up to feed. We have bluegill in there to provide forage for the, the blue catfish. Uh, they, they'll spawn in there, and there'll be a lot of bluegill young, and that provides some more forage for them beyond the, the feed that we feed them. Great. Well, let's give them some lunch. All right. Our catfish at home, they hear us on the docks. Once they hear us on the docks, they instantly come up. Oh, there's... So the little splashes like that, they're, they're bluegill. If the blue catfish come up and eat, you'll know it. You'll see their mouth come up out of the water. They're big.
blue cat, they don't bother the bluegill? Um, <laughs> they'll eat them, but you know, when, <laughs> when the, the food's in the water, the, the bluegill eat, the blue catfish eat, the, they're all eating the food and they don't really bother each other. They just kind of do their own thing. I'll be right there together. Oh, there's, there's one. There's one, yep. That's one of the small ones. There's one. Throw some feet out a little bit closer to shore here, see if they'll come in. Those all can't be bluegill, are they? Yeah, all the all but that one fish. come up and they just gulp oh, it yeah. in, they just... Well, this wraps up the very hot segment of the Paw Report here in Southern Illinois at the little grassy fish hatchery. And it also wraps up this season of the Paw Report. So from the Paw Report crew and your host, Kelly Goodwin, thanks for joining us for season 11 of the Paw Report. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. The Power Report on WEIU is supported by Rural King, America's farm and home store, livestock feed, farm equipment, pet supplies, and more. You can find your store and more information regarding Rural King at RuralKing.com. Fetcher's Pet Supply on the north side of the Charleston Square, serving the EIU community since 1991. Fetcher's Welcomes All Pets on a Leash is open seven days a week and offers made in the USA food. Pet supplies for dogs, cats, reptiles, and fish. Fetcher's Pet Supply in Charleston.